There we are. We are now live. We are the Mad Scientists. I'm Mad Frankie. This is Violet Igor over here. And together we make the Mad Scientists. And I'll get that cable out the way in a minute. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. I'm out of here. Hey, hey. Okay. <laughs> and let's make sure your camera is. You're, you got to come in. There you go. Looks good. <laughs> Yeah, so I got, that's got everything in just about. Yes, yeah, so good in. job. I love this camera. All right, so, I'll be right back. I'm not putting a lot of water on here. So what I thought I might do is using the Essex water, I might give it a little spritz, which will give it some water without being too overloaded. Let's have a look. Yes, yeah, so I think that might work well. And then perhaps I can go over it with the tissue if I've got too many pools. <clears throat> but I've got my tissue ready. I probably need about another six tissues. So I always need to soak things up a bit. Yeah, there isn't anything over here. Right. Doesn't really matter. I haven't got too much water. It's just nice to see it moving. <clears throat> so let's put some colour down. Now I've been putting the malachite down, so I'm definitely going to do that one again. Oh, there's a big hair coming out. These brushes, lovely though they are, big though they are, beautifully, beautiful to handle though they are, they do shed hairs. So that's a something you've got to be aware of and um, take note of. And if you see a hair, deal with it as soon as you see it, because otherwise it's going to spread everywhere. So malachite. So we're using the um, masking fluid as a barrier now, not the edge of crackle paste. So I've got one hair to the edge of that pan. I can get it out now. Yay! <clears throat> now, as long as I haven't got another one poking around in here. What's the color you're using again? Malachite. Oh, I thought so. Okay, thank you. It's quite my favorite one. Minty green, basically. And this again has the gesso on and it is pulling away here and there. So I will try some uh, watercolor ground. I shall have to order some. I haven't got any at the moment. I don't think Hobbycraft had me. I did have a look in there while I was in there. And I don't remember seeing any there, but if I look it up online, they'll tell me if they've got any at all. <clears throat> right. Big rinse on. And then some of the lovely lime green. I'm going to put a little bit inside here. I know I haven't finished elsewhere as well, but there you go. Sometimes I want things to mix, sometimes I don't. I thought it was a loose hair then, but it's obviously still attached as it came out. <clears throat> I don't really want any of this in there, but I'll have a little bit in there. That way I've got some in the centre. Where the blobbies are, like that. Yep, that's fine. Right. Now I'm keeping an eye on what I did before, like this one. Is drawn quite nicely. Plenty of lovely colours in there, isn't there? Absolutely plenty of lovely stuff. But I'm going to have to go over this one again because it's dried a really pale colour and I wanted it a deep dark colour, that one. So that's got to be sorted. This is the other one. And that one stayed really quite dark over there. This was the most recently done one, I think. Yes, because it's on board, uh, on not on board, but on. Uh, watercolor block yes 
So that's still got a lot of drawing to do, that one. But that dark purple really does look nice on that leaf, I must admit. You're right about that. <clears throat> We're not going to get any cracks on here because I didn't use crackle. So I have to remember that. So yeah, that's the imperial violet one I wanted, yes. Because it's got some lovely strong colour in it. Some in the background. It certainly is moving away from the edges here. <clears throat> It'll be interesting to see what watercolour ground does instead. And I'd like to know what watercolour ground is made of, because, I mean, if that's acrylic too, it's just a question of a different brand of acrylic we'd be looking for. That's an interesting question. I'll go take a look. Well, I have an instant answer. What? Really? Go on, yeah. Watercolor grounds are acrylic-based primers designed to provide the perfect amount of absorbency, and they can be used to adapt any universally primed canvas for watercolor painting. Universally primed. In other words, you use the ground to prime any substrate. So you don't have to have a canvas that's already universally primed. You just put the watercolor ground on your canvas. Well, no, no that's, yes, that, that's, um, that is, okay, good question. Hold the phone. It sounded like you had to have the ground on first for a bit there. Maybe it's just me misreading, mishearing it. Water, is watercolor ground the same as gesso? While watercolor ground is applied to a surface the same way as gesso is, but it includes an absorbent ingredient that makes it receptive to watercolor and gouache paints. Yeah. Um, so you're talking about it uh, deterring towards the gesso. Away from it's it's, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's sort of it's, pooling in odd areas, isn't it? I mean, I put yeah, it up yeah. to the edge of the leaf and it moves away again. Right, it's deflecting it. So uh -huh. that it, that would be the difference. The watercolor ground has that product in it that allows it to absorb better, whereas the gesso does it. And what uh -huh. I see is making your own watercolor ground would be. Um, oh, that's a thought. Oh, because I made some. I've got my own gesso, and it wasn't made with acrylic. Homemade gesso. It's just made with um, water and. Uh, I think it was just made with water. I can't remember what it was made with. It was made with calcium carbonate, but the rest of the ingredients I'm not totally up on. Well, there's a lady called Liz Chatterton, and her recipe yeah. for watercolor ground is gesso and modeling paste. Oh, oh, that's not the one I used. No, nothing like. <clears throat> I feel a lack of colour in the background here. So... So I'm going for some carmine.
that's interesting. Much a bit more here. This could be one that needs to dry first. I don't know. I've got a lot of pooly colour. <clears throat> Oh, I've just come across a wonderful quote um, from Austin Cleon, whoever he is. I don't know, but it's try this. The next time you come across someone's work and you're not sure exactly how they do it, don't ask them how it's done. Don't go after the right answer like some eager honors student. Look closer, listen harder. Then use your imagination and experiment with the tools you have. Your bad approximation will lead to something of your own. True. Very true. Yeah. I must look back at my old um, videos because I'm sure I videoed or at least talked about the recipe for the gesso I made. It was yeah. ages ago. It, it feels like deja vu. But don't don't you, as a mad scientist, usually do that. You you yeah. listen and watch what someone else has done. But when you hit the table playing, you wander off. I do. <laughs> and I, it's, it's wonderful. It's your touch. It's you. I'm seeing where you're talking about that uh, um, gesso repelling. Yeah. It's not... <laughs> it's interesting oh yeah exactly it's given it a white outline whereas before on the other palettes it was or on the other papers it was absorbing it and giving it the darker outline mm -hmm. interesting Uh, 33. 33 is burnt sienna. Yes, I'm going to put some burnt sienna down. I didn't use that before. So have you used any of the mediums that you have up there? Oh, no. <laughs> I told you to tell me. I know. I, I waited to. Well, you wandered me off over there. So, yeah. Well, I got to. Yeah. I'll have there's some. still room. And, and you have other paper. That too. Yeah. You don't have any other uh, leaves, leaves built up? To... No. Okay. Well. But yeah. I can put some different stuff on. Let's have another little. Yeah. See, these are all for watercolour. Oh, let me give this a shake first. Let me put some of this iridescent medium in that big pool over there. It's more. You, you ought to see the other side of my arm. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> what did you do? I leant on the edge of the paper, that's what. <laughs> you need a uh you need a painter's uh rest, you know? It's a, a mall stick. Yeah, it's Which it's a, a block that you could put over your a length of a voider block that you could put on. I was thinking your... more of a mile stick, which is a great big uh, rod that you balance on the edge and um, that has a weight on one end and you lean on it while you're painting like that so it holds your arm above the splodgy paint. Well, and that's what I was thinking of. Oh, it's the same thing. All right. Okay. Yeah, different different terms for it. It's a painter's yeah. rust. Yeah, I think that's another name for the same thing. 
I associate that more with um, oil painting. That I used to have one once. I don't know where it's gone. Probably thrown away as a bit of rubbish. That's what happens. So there's a bit of iridescent medium in there. Let's put a bit of ox gall liquid. I've got no idea what that's going to do. It's not the colour of normal ox gall. I've got a feeling it might be uh, faux ox gall, but it's, these things are formulated to do the same thing as the original stuff. And faux is better if you're animal friendly. Ian, little pot. Okay, top of one of them. Just a little bit. Let's put a bit up there. See? Now I'll have to come back and go, now where did I put it? Because I won't remember. Over there. And I've got to use this up because I want to close the thing afterwards. Let's put some there. So I've got it sort of scattered about, put a bit over there as well, where that smudgy bit is. Don't want too much in there because that's a nice, I like that break bit there. Right, I don't think I need any more of that, I'll just pour it in there I think, because I want that. Now what else can I add? Blending medium. Texture medium. Let's add some texture medium. I won't bother with the blending medium. So I think it's all... Oh, I don't know. Will I? Maybe I'll add a tiny drop over here. Blending medium. A little bit in the cap. Very little bit in the cap. Not as much as that. Just enough to go on one paintbrush. And add some there. I don't know. Is that blending or isn't it? Let's dribble some on because I want to get rid of it. I don't want it to go back into the pot, but I want to put the lid on. Texture medium. Let's have a look at the texture medium. See what that will do. I hate child locks. Right. Breaking up that edge a bit with it. Oh, it's certainly giving it some texture. It's it's rather like the um, granulation medium. It's it's really interesting. Yeah, let's put a bit more yeah. there. Fascinating. Yeah. I'm going to soak up some of that because I think that's just a bit too much. That darkness. Soak some of it up. Right. Let's rinse that and get some more texture medium and add it to that area as well. So basically, I've put some there and I've put some here as well. Good. It's certainly doing odd things, but then I think the paint was already doing odd things with the um, gesso. 
wasn't it? They seem to have sort of... Now, this one was not the gesso. This was not gesso. So that's what that looks like without gesso on the board, because this is the board one. And this one, which wasn't that dry before, is the one where it sort of shrinks away in areas, and it shrunk away a bit here, but I kept on piling stuff on, so it sort of... There's a bit of something going on there, some textural stuff going on there, almost acting just with the gesso. It must be. There's nothing else there. Sorry, here, just here. Can you see that? Okay, I can see it, yeah. Yeah, interesting, interesting. But I still want it to dry before I touch it too much. Now, I think I should also... God, that's so wet, that one. Let me get a freshie. I seem to use up a lot more tissues when I'm using, doing watercolour than I do when I'm doing acrylic. Right, let's have some texture medium over there because I've got some more left. Oh, and two hairs. Lights the hair. camera down there. Yeah, I've got three hairs down there. Here. Trying to get these hairs out, which I suddenly noticed. Right, just go back and get some colour. I've got to get further round. And I'm going to put some more texture medium on that. So I'm going to put a tiny little bit more in the top here. Because I want this on the acorn. And then I'm going to take the, the um, masking fluid off. And then I'll be able to paint the bits that are not protected. That are protected at the moment because they won't be. Yes, you knew what I meant. <clears throat> if you didn't, I think I might have. <laughs> I'm not sure. This is this is a different palette. Different Again, another different palette that I'm used to seeing from you. I'm loving this. Yeah, I'm trying palette. to use the same palette as I've already used. I haven't used the turquoise in this yet, so let's have a bit of turquoise over here. Because I did use color. Well, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Don't be sorry. I, I'm making statements, not criticizing. Well, it does make things rather busy if you use a lot of colors, a lot of but different it, colors. It, if it's what you want, it's what you want. This is where P's steps of coming back with pencils markers uh gelatos crayons pan pastels something like that something more this is where i wouldn't want to do that not yet i would want to at least come back with more watercolor first but the thing with coming back with gelatos and, th and pencils and things is you're putting lots of detail in i'm not sure i want lots of detail i want to keep it loose i want to keep it loose and ephemeral and all these colours, it's blending in quite a lot. But don't forget, I shall have these edges to do. Yeah. I may have to do with watercolour pencils and then um, <clears throat> something like in ink tents and then blend it in. That's where I went. Well, not only that, but once you put those on, you're pretty much done with the watercolour. No, because they're watercolour um, pencils. Yeah. So they're another watercolour medium. Yeah. I'm, I was thinking colored pencils, not the water solubles. Well, I was thinking the water soluble ones because then you can blend them a bit and they won't be so 
um, dead straight and, and angular. Yeah. They'll be more blendy. I think a little bit more of that green. Oh, and I wanted some texture in there as well, didn't I? So I've used the ox gall, the blending medium, the iridescent medium, and the texture medium. I have not used the um, granulating medium. I think we've got enough going on without that. And I want to put some of this in there while it's still wet. It is just still wet. I haven't completely forgotten it. Anywhere else. I want to put some in with that red, I think. Right, we'll see what that does. And I would like to put a bit more lime in here, but not with any more of the texture medium. We'll have to sort of look at the replay to find out where the Oxgall liquid went because I've completely forgotten. Rust was coughing where the what is? Oxgall liquid. Oh. Went. Yeah, I can't back up either. Um, it's probably somewhere down here. Yeah. I had it around the other way around. We're not live, so I can't even pull it. Oh. Oh, that's quite nice. That is, isn't it? Yeah, I quite like that. Look I don't like the red in that um, maple leaf. I like that. Yes, but it's flooding in from outside and it's just changing changing something. I don't want to change so much. Ooh. Maybe if I just... It just flooded over. I don't really want it to do that. I'd rather have more, more of this in there. I can stop the red from spreading. I'm not sure I can. No, I'm not sure I can at all. Unless I do that and a deep, more pinky fire it. Yes, that's better. I don't mind the purple flooding because we've got more purple over here. Well, that upper part is off camera, so I couldn't quite see what you were talking about. I was that focused bit. on watching that green and that, that leaf. That was flooding over this part of the leaf, and it was ah. destroying the edge of the leaf, so you couldn't see the difference. So I, I didn't like that much. I, I was, uh, my eyes were watching that middle green. Oh, well, that, yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I was I like that. mesmerized. Got to sort of lighten the edge as well so as to get a cleaner, greener colour in there. This is much drier now because I've done so much drying on it. And 
Now, I don't mind a bit of that purple spreading in. That's perfectly fine. But I don't want any more red spreading in. Because I can go over the red again when it's dry and get it up to the edge of the masking fluid without it running in. Although I'm not so sure I do like that running in there. Yeah, that's better. I think this is a bit too much here on the edge there. It will flow down again anyway. That's nice. That's why I went and put some more green in here, you see, because I like the green and the turquoise. That's a nice combination. Oh, sorry, you can't see that. Right down here, the green and the turquoise I'm talking about. Okay. Beg your pardon. Yes, I just wanted to add a little touch of that green in there with the turquoise because it, it blends nicely. It and does. I do that. And I like this here. I think I want a bit more of that um, Ujima flip. A little bit more of that in there. Just a bit. And then a bit more orange in there as well. I'm calling it orange. Is it orange? Cadmium orange. Mm, 33. Yep, cadmium orange. That it was. And that can blend nicely with the yellow ochre. Yes. And that blends in quite nicely with the red. Quite nice, quite nice. I want to tease the purple a bit further over. So I just have to move these over a bit so I can... Move things around. So, so the red on the well, now it's at the top. So the red at the top, you use? Did you use the uh, medium up there? Probably some yeah. sort of medium. Yes. Yeah. Look at. I love the way that moves. Ooh, I've got some. Ooh, oh, can you see that? You can. Yeah. Look at that. Scooch look at those. It's it's cracking of its own accord. There's no. Crackle paste or anything there, but there's cracking going on there. Mm. Switch it over to your right a little bit. Thank you. Um, yeah. I can see something down there. Mm hmm Well, maybe I can get it closer. Well, maybe you can. Let's, Let's have a look and see. We can put try. Now these are things I would put on a short. You can't get any closer than that, ten. There, this little bit here. Very nice. Yeah, I see little. There. Yeah. You see that? It's yeah. marvelous. It's sort of, you can't see it so much in, in your view, but this, this brown color from the mixing of the blue and the purple and the green has made it this little brownish patch there. And you don't remember what medium you put there? Nope. <laughs> Well, well, maybe it was texture right. medium, maybe it was blending medium. I don't know. We'll have to have a look back. Yeah, we'll have a look back. And the 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 purple that goes down to the right from that, there's there's movement in there that's really nice. The reddish purple at the bottom right, at the bottom center. There's, oh, this here? No, 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 bottom, bottom. Yeah, in there, right in there. There's some nice. Yeah, nice and blending, Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> There's something out. happening over here as well. And some little threads coming here like little dendrites, like these ones on the red here. Oh, yeah. I could take a close-up of that and put that somewhere. In fact, so I'll probably take it with a phone. Yeah, why don't you do a photo montage of all three of these <clears throat> with different uh, views, really close up? Well, I can do another little short going in, you know. <laughs> well, I can try anyway, see how well it, it shows up, but after it's dried. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think that's it then. That's it of this lot. Anyway. That's beautiful. Okay. Okay. Isn't that beautiful? There you go. It's quite light compared with the colors, the more intense colors I can see. If it were me, I would have added another leaf. Um, well, I've got four in there and an acorn. I think it's enough. Well, yeah, the acorn is very dis barely discernible. Okay. Well, it will be more so when I get the um, uh, masking fluid off and I can put a bit more detail into it. Yeah. But you not try too much. It. Okay, well, I'm going to come back. And I've got the same as going to apply with the leaves. They've got to have their masking fluid taken off as well. But not until they're dry. There we go. Let's say bye-bye. Bye-bye. You haven't got anything you want to show, have you? Um, you well, I do. My, my little, I, I crocheted my little. Uh, Ooh. My, oh, oh, can I ask? It's a little uh, dangly thingy. It's my little yeah. kid. And he's got a hat on. Oh, so there we go. It looks like he's made of sort of husks of something. No, it's just it's it's a. Oh, the way it's been crocheted, they look like sort of a a, a a load of husks threaded. Yeah, and then there's a bead, and I drew a, a face on the bead, oh. <laughs> and then I made a separate hat, and I oh, hat on. So that's all. That's Has it got all. bubbles on that hat? Got it's what? got bubbles on, hasn't it? Little bubbles. No, it's just, just the corner. I, it's just the way I stitched it up. Ah, right. They look like little, little, either little bubbles or little ears. They're they're the corners of a piece of square, and I wrapped thread around it so they poof up like that. Yeah, so they're little ears. Little ears <laughs> for a kitty cat. Little busy pussy cat. Yeah. Why not? That's <laughs> lovely. Lovely. What a nice ending. What a nice ending. Bye -bye. No, let me find the little, where's my little arrow gone? Oh, there it is, right in the middle of the screen. Let me put it on that. Let me get ready and then press. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.